to our Lady of Lewis Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Santi, celebrating with you the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And take a moment, if you would, with me to consider our lives and confess our sins. For our failure to love the people God places in our lives, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we have failed to live out the faith with courage, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the good we mean to do but don't, the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks to your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the living God, the Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that Christ will be our true light. Father, you call your children to walk in the light of Jesus Christ. Free us from all darkness and keep us in the radiance of your divine truth. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to die in the town. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to die. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Some time later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, Can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, Yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed are the people who know the joyful shouts. In the light of your countenance, O oh Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day. And through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One 
of Israel our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized with Christ Jesus were baptized into death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newest of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourself as dead to sin and living for God and Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. process of creation. There's you, Daddy, and you, Mommy, but there's also God. 
who is the author of life, celebrated through Alicia's gift to this woman, uh, allowing her to be a mom, and that was something she so wonderfully wanted. We are in our culture continuing to diminish the idea that life comes from God. We have made ourselves God in so many ways. We control it all. It's up to us. Nobody can tell us what to do. And I, I think this is a gentle reminder, this passage from King of Kings, that in fact, we are people, the Book of Kings, I should say, we are called on to recognize that every human life is something we cooperate in bringing forth with the grace and with the power and with the miracle of God's creation. Okay, let's go to that second reading, St. Paul of the Romans. You know, when you come out of the experiences I have recently of losing somebody you love, it is so easy, as a matter of fact, very tempting, to focus on the moment of or the experience of death, because it's so overwhelming, it's such a crushing emotional experience. I think this reading is reminding us that long ago, in Asbury Park, New Jersey, when my mom was baptized, she entered into a covenant relationship with our Lord, where he promised Cecilia, look, uh, you're going to die with me in this baptism, but also because of my resurrection, you're going to rise with me. This reading from St. Paul is saying to us, please don't focus so much on death that you lose sight of the fact that death is conquered by me, and that our story is not about our death. Our story is about moving through death to eternal life. And it's something we need to remind ourselves, I think, particularly when we're in the period of mourning or grieving, that this is part of the passage that leads to eternal life. And, as I've said many, many times in my priesthood, Jesus makes you a promise. You can take it to the bank, which is my way of saying, if Jesus tells you something is true, you can believe it. And he's saying to us in no uncertain terms, we, who have been welcomed into his family through baptism, are also, by extension, welcomed into the kingdom of heaven, because he takes us with us through the mystery of death and shows us the glory of eternal life. That the more faithful we are to him through our baptism and living out of our baptism, the more he welcomes us joyfully to heaven. The end of the story is not death. And I think for a lot of us, we need to be reminded of that, because death can be such an overwhelming and sometimes consuming mystery as we try to figure out why we die. We die because it's the passage to something glorious, that passage to eternal life. And finally, for this gospel, I think a couple of things are going on in the Gospel of Matthew. Um, I think we're being reminded by the first couple of uh, paragraphs, which are tough, you know. Jesus is saying, you're either with me or you're against me. You're either fully in or not. I want to hear about that person who was wishy-washy when it comes to me. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard, these first few lines of the Gospel, because he's saying to us, look, either come in or leave, but I'm not going to have you be persons who step in occasionally to be my followers. You're all in or you're not. You can't pick and choose and say, well, I'm with Jesus when it's easy, or when he calls me to stuff that isn't so hard to live. I'm with him all the time. And I'm with him even in those moments when I may even disagree with what he has to say, but I trust the Lord is God, and I will follow his command, and I will do what he calls me to do. That's not easy to do. I think, in fact, it's a challenge for all of us. You may be a lay person or priest or religious, but there are times when the demands of Christ to live a certain life are not easy for any of us. But he's saying to us in this reading, join me, be one with me, be all in. And he's inviting us to do that. And that's not something our culture finds easy. We like to pick and choose. We like to decide that I get to decide everything. I like the promise to say, I'm all in. But if I don't like it, then I can walk away. Just this week, in fact, I found it interesting. 30 self-proclaimed Catholic Democrats in Congress uh, came out with a statement supporting and saying it's a religious reason why they support the unrestricted right to abortion. It's just amazing to me. It was published on behalf of Rose DeLauro, an 80 year old congresswoman. She says, I'm Catholic, baptized, raised, and confirmed. And the fundamental tenets of my faith compel me to defend the woman's right to access abortion. But it gets more comical, where she says, We believe in the importance of providing a collective safety net to our most vulnerable are most vulnerable. Who in the world could be more vulnerable than a developing and evolving child of the womb who depends on all of us to protect him and her? And yet they're saying in some way that the right to terminate a child through the full nine months of pregnancy is part of the safety net to our most vulnerable. No one is more vulnerable than the other one child. And yet these people, these 30 Catholics in Congress, think they have the right to decide that God made 
I thought he knew what he was talking about when he said in the person of Jesus, Woe to him who hurts the little ones. Better a millstone should be tied around the neck, and he be thrown into the river than to hurt the little ones. Who is littler than the person in the womb? So when Catholics come along and say, no, no, I get to decide. I get to choose. Nobody can tell me what to do. They're basically saying, I'll go with God and my Catholicism when it's convenient. When it's not, no, 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 I decide. It's us making ourselves God. It's really the sin of Adam and Eve all over again. God thought he knew what he was doing and saying, don't eat of that tree, but I know better than God. I'm smarter than God. It's the essence of arrogance. It's the sin of blasphemy. And boy, it's very popular in our culture. Jesus is saying to us in this gospel, you're either all in and you accept my teachings as they are, but don't say you are my followers or disciples, because you're not. Because you don't get to pick and choose when these not the font of our wisdom, the font of our teaching is God himself. And then the second part of this reading I didn't want to miss is the opportunity to remember that whoever we serve, whoever we help along the path of life, and every day I think all of us get a chance to see someone who's in need, the more we are in fact serving the Lord. Whoever receives you receives me. Whoever gives a cup of cold water to the little ones and the needful serves me. You know, uh, I do this and I know it's a little strange, but I have in the trunk of my car these silly little bottles of water that we all buy. And it's not unusual for me, if it's a very, very hot day, to see these guys from I know other countries and probably not legally here who are doing the lawns of everybody around me. And I may just pull up my car and get out, go to the trunk of the car, and just deliver a bunch of bottles of water. A silly little gesture on my part, but I keep thinking of this reading. Whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of the little ones, the needful ones, does it not just for them, but for me. I think what this second passage in the Gospel is telling us is that there are Christs all around us, in the loneliness, in the broken, in the thirsty, in the needful. And that every time we bother to care about them, if we look closely into that face, we are seeing the face of God. And that one day, that face will be there to welcome us in the kingdom of heaven. And that person who helped along the way, who was lonely or broken or thirsty or had no one to care, that was me. You may not have recognized me facially, but that was me. You have and I have every single day the opportunity to stop, to care, to minister to people who are in fact alter Christian, other Christs, if only we have the vision to see into their hearts. And in them lies the Lord. Okay, final thought. This is the July 4th weekend holiday, and I'm going to talk about one of my heroes in celebrating America and the greatness of our freedom. Uh, here's a little picture for you, one of my many, many pictures. So, the man on the left over here is a justice of the Supreme Court named Antonin Scalia. And I'm troubled by the fact that more and more as he's been gone for a while, people forget him. And then the dashing priest on the side is me. But I mention that. Because one of the things I love about him, while he was a guy who loved America so much and loved the Constitution and, and was very, very big in protecting the greatness of our country, a case came before the Supreme Court and it was about flag burning because there were protesters who were disputing policies of the United States who would take the American flag and burn it. And here's what he said. He said, I think anyone who burns the American flag is a jerk because this is the greatest country in the world. And if you would desecrate the flag, you are a foolish, foolish person. But he would not vote against that person's right to burn the flag. Because he said the greatness of this country is we don't have to all agree. And we have different points of view. And I may think your ideas are truly foolish. And the idea of burning the flag is just plain dumb. But I will defend to the dead your right to express your opinion. Isn't that really what the First Amendment is all about? We may disagree like crazy with lots of people. We're a very divided country, especially now. But I will defend anyone's right to express a different point of view. Even these 30 crazy Catholic Congress people who actually believe they can call themselves Catholic and think it's okay to kill a preborn child, that it's a right, I think they're wrong. But I would still nonetheless defend their right to express this foolish point of view. To me, one of the great American heroes of the life of was Anthony Scalia, who said, I think what you're saying is dumb and stone to actually believe you have a right to, to, to burn the flag. What a silly, silly idea. But I do believe you have the right to free expression. And if the way you express yourself is by burning your flag, while I may think that's foolish and dumb, 
That's the greatness of this America we celebrate on Independence Day, that I will defend your right even to be done. I will defend your right to express yourself in ways I strongly disagree with, because that's the American way. And that's what makes us different from so many lands around the world, where you can't say or think what you want, and where you are captive to one or another ideology. In America, thanks be to God, we're a place where you're free to think what you will, to express as you will, and that right is protected by people like Justice Scalia. And thank God for him and those who defend that right to speak freely. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for us salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate on the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge his living and the dead, and his kingdom will have the end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the and life, life of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Now with confidence in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers and petition. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are not baptized will, through the preaching of the church, be led to accept the grace and call of God to receive his new life we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians who serve us in government may place their loyalty to Christ above every political and personal loyalty. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to welcome Christ as he comes to us in the stranger, the sick, the imprisoned, and the unborn child, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish and family members who are ill, may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Baby Mia Scats, Deacon Dominic Valdara, Giuseppe M. Jordan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Genevieve Mancusi, Adeline Trentacasa, and Marianne Chikensia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, Theodore Yagamaki, Mary Claire Brennan, the Purgatorial Society, Grace and Salvatore Bambinelli, Cecilia Lasante, Frank Jerry Germantino, Cecilia Lasante, Pasquale Bar Barbuda, Suzanne Baranski, and Donna Brasso. Whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let me add some intentions if I can. First, for those who are sick, I want to pray. My friend Linda has asked me to pray for her sister Judy down in Florida. Praying for you, Judy, and your well-being. I continue to pray for my grammar school classmate Tommy Burke and his well-being. Among the sick, I also pray for Judge Tony Falanga, dear friend. Pray for Joanne Cabaccini, Tim Moore, Kimberly Cusack, Christine Bauman, Michael Chanover, Pray for Jeanette Chanover Davidson, Carol Silva, Nelwyn Randisi. I pray for Joe Falgiano, dear friend, Anthony Kremi. Pray for Kathy Bordengo. Kathy's had a tough couple of weeks, but she's coming out of it. Pray for Nancy Doherty. For Tom Miller. Again, Tom, we're praying for you every day for your well being. Ginny Rivera. I pray too for Courtney Genovese, Jose E. Senna, Jimmy Collins, Anthony Kremi, Tom Sedita. Pray as well for Annette Romance, for Baby Oakley. For Justin Doherty, pray for Mary and Pat Sears, Dario Rivera, uh, Anthony Posterino, Carol Pablo Eshandi. I pray for all the Paratine family, for Angelo and Al Clemente, for Leanne Lasanti, for Katie O'Connor, for Bob Nigro. I pray for Judy Alaco, 
I pray for all prisoners of conscience fighting for freedom, especially Jimmy Lay in prison in China. Pray for Larry Lewis, for Millie Paradiso, for Patricia Stewart. Pray for Ursula Vobis, Connie Ivanis, Maria Cavioli, and all the members of the McShay family. Among those who are sick, let me remember Teresa Leo Fisher, for Larry Meyer, for Joseph Grafeo. I pray for Vilio Bronzini, for Andy Stefano. I pray for all of those who are suffering mental illness of any kind and for the well-being of them and their caretakers. Pray for Courtney Desjardins, Tommy Swingross down in Virginia, for Mary and Ken Johnson. Pray for Patrick Cuccius and Elizabeth Carter. Among the sick, I pray as well for Martin Soval, for Sam and Beverly Maggio, for Janet Chevelle, for Russell Castro Giovanni, for Donna Elliott and her continued recovery from surgery, for retired Major Resty Malari. Pray as well for Michelle Spinelli, Ray McGrath, Brian and Kathy Rogers, Karen Guadagno, for Valeria Barcheskis, and for uh, Annette Salinitro. Pray for Susie and Vinnie Bignardi, for Margaret Ann Steiser, for Rose Madonna, and for my classmate Pat Reynolds. I pray as well for uh, Glenn Mankin, for Frank Matassa, for Kathy, um, who is the sister of our friend Helen, who works at the rectory. I pray too for Father Bob Lebrano. I pray as well for Christy Hernandez, Christian Hernandez. I pray as well for Rose Marie, who has been facing some health challenges lately, and for Dina Cellini Clancy. Let me pray too, finally, among the sick for Bill and Fran, who are the parents of my friend Martha Formato. Pray for Jack and uh, all who are dealing with irreconcilable families. Pray for Lisa Schwartz, uh, who has been recovering from an amazingly serious motorcycle accident, and her fiance. Uh, I pray too for Billy Sarasoli. He's had a heck of a week in the hospital. Billy, we're praying for you, for Chuck, Kathy, and Stacy Meesh. Stacy's having her baby girl as we speak. Pray for Wayne Steinbrenner, for Marianne and Stephen Orlando, uh, for the Orlando, Drago, Moriarty, and LaFaso families. And uh, also I want to pray for all the family members of Ann Scott, who have faced a number of health challenges. And then among those who have died, I want to pray for uh, Corinne Caracciolo. I pray obviously for my mom and dad, Cecilia and Nicholas Lasanti, for Dominic Maccio, as well as for Luigi Antoni Rosmini, Gemma Stumpa Rosmini, Mike Goff. I pray for Steve O'Mara, for Regina Brighton, for John Slade. I pray for Kristen Sedita Duggan and Tom O'Sullivan, for Bessie and TC Center, for all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, for Bartolomeo Beni. I pray for Guy, Gaetano, Salvatore, and Angelo Emilo, for Anna and Gary Gomes, for Albert Cavelli, Paul Struzzieri, Emilio Alaca. I pray for Thomas Di Crescenzo, as well as Helen, Luke, and John Marr. For Pat and George Layton, Ursula, Jack, and Paul Cronin, Kay and Mike Lynch, Doris and Hank Erickson. Pray for Paul Lowell, for Robert J. McCarthy, for Joan Kretz. Pray for Rosalie Salco, Sophia Maglione, Phyllis Petrowski, uh, Kenneth and Marie Taylor, Judge Don Belfi, Nicholas Marini, Thomas Peter Lopresti. Pray for Pat Sestar, Jean Claude Lene, Paul Romeo, for Ed Wrights, for Judy Famono and Mary and John Coyne, for Doug Julik, for Chris and Marion O'Brien, for Dennis Francis Cooney, and for Stanley Krupski. Among those who have died, I recall as well, uh, Jack Carroll and Dave Robin, Christina Formato, and Marion O'Brien. I pray for Billy and Michael Sarasoli, Mary and Joseph William, Kathy Orofino, Margaret O'Connell Lasanti, Kenny Bolando, John Maureen, Ann, Ed, Mary, and Peter Raber. I pray for Monica and Ray Carrison, for Richard Rosmarin and Jimmy Soldo. I pray for Carmela Labolita, Cynthia Prague, Elaine Tiso, Matthew Toriello, Joseph Sardone, and Bessie Sena. For Bill Kelly, great guy from the FBI days, Isabella Glauda, Danny Carlson, who would be 40 years old this year, for Pauline, Irene, and Tom Romano, Ed June and Eddie Jandovitz, Father Don Babinski, Father Joe Lukaszewski. I pray for Father Ken Marks and Terry Moran, for Marie Sicolo and Gerard Granito. For Marie and Albert Cavelli, Peggy and Richard DeMarco, Corinne Locke, my dear friend. For Steve Haller, uh, he was my roommate when I was last in the hospital. He's gone to God now. For Melissa Bergman, for Joseph Pavone, for Nick Martone and John Bonifacio. 
I pray for Jerry Monk, for Jean and Nicholas Delario, Colin and Tommy Ryan, Nancy Palumbo, Catherine Cheney, John Slade, Helen Kiddash, Richard Maglione, and Al Menendez. Let me pray for William Anthony Bruceweiler, for Teresa D. Palmo, also known as Tessie. I pray for Annette Salintro, for Charles McLellan, Jean Hersick. I pray for Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Mary and Donato Forlenza, Nicole Toussaint. I pray for Nona Scaglione, for Emily Lafaso, for Melissa Bergman, for Bridget Clementi, for Ray Anzalone, Brian Hussey, Suzanne Scanio, Susan Mulligan, Betty Moore, Bridget Clementi. Let me pray too for uh, uh, Father Ken Winkler, Father Tim Hurton, for Jenna Tuller, as well as for uh, uh, Bob Mason. Bob Mason is my friend, Randy Mason's brother. Let me add a few intentions first for all of our men and women in the armed forces, especially this July 4th weekend, those who defend our freedoms. I pray for our first responders, police, firefighters, and EMTs. I pray for doctors and nurses who try to keep us healthy and the orderlies who assist them. I pray too for the people of Taiwan and their freedom, the people of Hong Kong and their freedom. I pray too for people around the world who are oppressed, but especially for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and for their freedom from the oppression of Russia. I pray too for your special intentions and mine. I ask you to join me too in praying for all those special intentions by offering them to the Mother of God. Join me in saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us bread of life. Blessed be God for it. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and all of His Lord God, through your sacraments, you give us the power of your divine grace. And may this Holy Eucharist help us to serve you ever faithfully. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in us. Father all powerful and ever living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. You never cease to call us to a new and more abundant life. God of love and mercy, you're always ready to forgive. We know we are sinners, and yet you invite us to trust in your mercy. Time and time again, we broke your covenant, but you never abandon us. Instead, through your Son, Jesus our Lord, you bind yourself even more closely to the human family by a bond that can never be broken. And so, in wonder and with gratitude, we join our voices with the choirs of heaven to proclaim the power of your love and to sing of our salvation in Christ. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, have none earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us so that we might be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here today before you and send forth the power of your spirit 
so that these gifts of bread and water may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your Son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. And yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in an everlasting sign of your loving covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast in the company of his friends and disciples. And so, while they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death for Lord until you come again. We do all this in memory of Jesus Christ, who is our Passover, and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and his resurrection, and we look forward to the coming of that day when he will return to give us all the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those who have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all into one body and heal us of every division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence to share in the lives of the saints in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and in the company, too, of our dearly departed brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, Let's remember them now and offer to them the prayer of eternal life. Then, freed from every shadow of death, we shall take our place in the new creation, and we shall give you thanks with and through Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. To look beyond the mystery of death and to believe that death is conquered by Christ and that life is in fact eternal. For the faith to believe, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my, my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord 
be with you always. With your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come and spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. One would be, you know, before the pandemic in our parish, we offered an 8 p.m. Mass Monday through Friday, and then of course the pandemic put an end to all that. But we have since then gone back to a, an evening Mass one night a week on Wednesday at 8 o'clock. And I just mention that because if you're watching the Mass and you happen to be uh, on Long Island, you may think to yourself, well, I'm not yet comfortable going back to crowded churches on Sunday, but We'd love to have you for the not-so-crowded Mass, 8 o'clock on Wednesday night in our parish chapel. So let people know that there is an evening Mass at Our Lady of Lourdes every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, and uh, we'd like to encourage people to come and pray together with us. Please give that a thought if you would. And then the other thing I want to mention, as always, is please be with us on Personally Speaking, either on YouTube, by like punching in Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Santi, or listening to us on Sundays at the Catholic Channel at Sirius XM. Channel 129. This week our guest is Rich Lowry, who is the editor-in-chief of the great magazine National Review. A uh, wonderful interview, not only in terms of faith and values, but also an overview of the political situation in America from Rich Lowry. And then next week is Luke Russell. Many of you remember Tim Russell was a preeminent journalist who was the moderator of Meet the Press, the winner of every award in journalism you could find, who uh, suffered a very unexpected young death. And Luke is his son who took over for a while and worked at NBC, but then went on a pilgrimage basically around the world to find the meaning of life, and has written a great book uh, that's called Look For Me There, about coping with his father's death, and about the experience of traveling the world, and about why his Catholic faith is so important to him. It's wonderful to be with a young man like Luke Russett, who loves being Catholic, is unapologetic about being Catholic, and who shared with us the insights into what his faith did in terms of giving him consolation at the passage of his father he loved so deeply. So next week is Luke Russell. Please tune in and watch that if you would. My friends, let's pray. Lord God, may this sacrifice and communion 
give us a share in your divine life. And may it help us to bring your love to a needful world. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen.